Hello. I recently purchased a new dado stack and it came in a cardboard box. Uh, this isn't a big huge deal to me. These high quality dado stacks are pretty expensive and I would rather spend the money on a quality blades than including a box which let's be honest probably isn't going to be that nice anyways. So this gives me an opportunity to build my own. It's a fun little afternoon project with some scrap plywood. Only thing that I re really needed was the hinges as well as the latches, which I personally had from another project. So with that, let's get into it. I'm going to start by cutting one three-quarter inch piece of bolted birch by ten and a half inches by ten and a half inches. Then we're going to cut three five-eighths inch bolted birch by ten and a half inches by ten and a half inches. Then we're going to mark the dead center of the three-quarter inch board as well as one of the five-eighths inch board. Once we get the centers marked out, then we can draw a eight and a quarter inch diameter circle in both of those boards. Once we get both the circles drawn, we're going to want to get the three quarter inch board, and then we're going to want to draw a line going from two sides that's square to the edge. And then because I'm just winging it here, I'm going to get my fancy little protractor angle tool out and draw some 45 degree lines here when I could have just gotten my straight edge out and marked the corners. But I like to make it difficult on myself, so this is the way I did it. I know lots of dado stacks are different. Mine has four blades on each chipper. If yours is different, you're going to have to adjust accordingly. Here I'm going to grab a one inch Forstner bit so I can drill the holes where all the ends of the chippers are going to go. Now I'm going to put a mark on every line that's a half inch in from the outside of the circle. Now we can take that over to the drill press and start drilling out our holes. If you set up the fence in a stop block, you can make repeatable cuts and get all four drilled pretty easily without really having to reference any of the lines. Then you can adjust the fence in the stop block again to get all of the holes drilled on the angles. Once I got all the holes drilled, then we can take it and put a chipper in there. We're going to line up the blade with one edge of the hole, and we're going to put a mark going down to the center line that we drew. Then we're going to rotate it and do the same thing. And once we get those done, then we're going to move the chipper so that the blade is lined up with the other side of the hole, and then we're going to connect that line to the line that we just drew. I'm pretty pumped about my son writing me my own custom songs after we made him that shelf in the last video. That guitar I bought him all those years back is paying off pretty good. Once we get that center section cut out, then we can get it all set up here and test fit everything to make sure it all's going to fit right. The chippers ended up fitting really nice with just enough wiggle room to make them easy to put in and get out. I am going to use two of the foam pads that came with the dado stack to put in between the chippers and that blade and then one in between that blade and the other outside blade. Now I'm going to bust out the old spindle sander just to clean up all of those rough edges that were left by the jigsaw. Then you can get out the old circle cutting jig here and cut out that eight and a quarter inch circle in that last piece of 5 8 ply that we marked that circle on back in the beginning. Now we're going to cut an eighth inch round over in the upward facing side of both of those pieces. 
this has always been a little bit of a sketchy cut to me. Have any of you ever had one of these cuts get away from you? Turn into the spinning wheel of death? Pretty terrifying. Now I'm gonna use a scrap piece of walnut to put around the edge of the lid of this box. This is gonna be kind of a dual purpose function. It makes it so the lid fits nice, and it also makes it so that the hinges are a lot easier to install. It is really important that this piece be the exact same thickness of the hinge, or slightly less. It needs to be about 3 eighths of an inch thick, I had this extra leftover piece that was just over three quarters, so I just cut it in half on the bandsaw. This would be a lot easier to do on the table saw if you had a zero clearance insert. I don't have one, so I had to do it with the planer and the bandsaw there. We're going to get one of those pieces secured down to the top. This is going to be the front piece of the lid. I'm going to attempt to put some brad nails in to hold that piece in so I can put all the other pieces in and not have that piece move. Unfortunately, when I put the brad nail in, I was at a little too steep of an angle here. I didn't want the nail to run through the board. It was a little close to three, three quarter inch, 23 gauge nails, and I blew it out the side of the piece. You'll see here, it wasn't that big of a deal. I was able to work it out with a pair of needle nose pliers and then some other bigger pliers to pull it out. It's got a little aggressive there. Once we got that piece in, then we can put all of the other pieces in and push it up against it and that won't move because of those brad nails. Then we can get it all clamped down and secured and let that dry. Now I'm going to take the bottom panel of the box and I'm going to cut a 15 millimeter radius on all of the corners. This will make a lot more sense once we get the main body of the box all glued together. Here I'm going to sand all the pencil marks off of the chip holder layer. This is just going to be a lot easier to sand it now before we get it all glued together. Now we can get everything ready to start gluing up. Just make sure you get the glue on the right sides here. You want the parts with the 8 inch radius that we cut earlier. Not radius, round over. You want the round over facing up. Once we get all these layers all glued together, I'm going to let it sit for just a couple minutes and set. And then we can flip it over on its side and get it all clamped up and let it dry. Well at this point you've made it just over halfway through the video. I'd really appreciate it if you'd give me that little thumbs up button, if you feel I deserve it. It really helps get the video to other people who share our interests, and will really help me make more content in the future. Thanks a bunch. You can see here why I cut the radius on the corners of that bottom layer earlier. I don't have hundreds of awesome router bits, and my flush trim bit isn't long enough to cut this whole piece at once. So now I can use that bottom layer as the template guide with the flush trim bit to cut all of the radiuses on all of the corners now. I'll also just run it through just to make sure everything's nice and even along the edge of the entire box. Now we're going to get the sacrificial fence installed on the table saw along with the dado stack and we're going to cut a 3 8 rabbit along every edge of the box. We're going to make a shallow pass here first so we don't get a bunch of tear out. Then we're going to set the blade height with the cutoff of that walnut that we put on the lid earlier. We want this to be the exact thickness of that walnut. So basically this is going to be the exact same thickness as the hinge. Now we're going to make one additional cut. We want that back rabbit of the box to be the exact length from the center of the hinge pin 
to the edge of the hinge. This will make the hinge operate correctly. Now we can mark out where we need to trim the walnut strips on the rear of the lid to be able to install the hinges. I'm going to set these hinges about an inch and a half in from the edge of the box. Anytime I'm working with hinges, I always prefer to use a knife to mark everything out versus using a pencil. Using a knife, I can get, get them a lot tighter and a lot cleaner in there. When using a pencil, a lot of times they end up being kind of loosey-goosey in there. It's not very ideal. So we're going to mark an inch and a half from the edge of that lid there, and we're going to scribe, real lightly scribe a line. Then we can use put the knife in that scribe line, push the hinge up against it, and then we can mark the other side of the hinge with the knife. Now I have some real clean lines to work with back on the table saw. I'm going to set that dado blade up to cut the majority of that walnut strip out. I didn't want to set it up too high to try to cut all of it. I knew how that was going to turn out. I was going to end up going into the ply. So I wanted to leave it just a little low so that I could come back and clean up that walnut with a chisel. Only took just a couple minutes of some chisel work here just to clean all of that little strip out of there. Then I just hit it with some sandpaper once I was all done. Next up, we're going to install the hinges in the box. Just pushed it up against the fence on my table saw with putting some scrap wood under, underneath the lid to try to get it at the right height. This way I can keep the lid perfectly square to the box body itself. Then I'm going to sand a chamfer on the front edge of that rabbit just so the lid will clear it. I'll also sand a little bit of a chamfer on that walnut strip we put in on the back side of that strip just so it'll close nicely. Now that it's together, I can give it a quick sanding with some 80 and 120 grit. And once we got it all sanded down, I can take it back over to the router table, and I'm going to put a quarter inch round over around both the top and the bottom of the box. All the rounded edges really do give it a really nice feel. It also keeps corners from getting smashed when it gets banged around in the shop a little bit. Now I'm going to get the finish put on. I'm using Natura One Coat Wood Oil. I feel it's pretty easy to install. Why do I keep saying install? I've done this clip like four times now. Apply. It's easy to apply. It's pretty reasonably priced. Just put it on, let it sit for a couple minutes, and then wipe it off with a shop rag. Now I'm going to use this little corner jig I made a long time ago for putting feet on cutting boards just so I can drill the holes in there to get those exact same feet installed in this box. Fancy rubber feet. And lastly, we can install the latches on the front of the box. And get it all loaded up with the blades.